Welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you here and thank you for stopping by. Now, a few days ago, I wrote down all the types of photography that I wanted to try. And one of them was macro photography, obviously. Of course it was macro photography. So today I'm gonna to quickly run through my first attempt at macro photography, my setup, what I did, um, how I edited the images, um, the equipment I used, all the, all the good things like that that, that might, you might find useful. And here's my first disclaimer. It's probably not gonna be very good. It's my first time and I am sharing with this with you as I learn. So it's never gonna be brilliant. I'm not a professional um, macro photographer. I'm not a professional instructor or tutor. It's just in the true sense of the title of these videos, I shoot it, I learn something and I share it. So here we go. Okay, so the intention is to get not just a close-up of something with intense detail on it, but also to get a something close to the lens, but to have the focus throughout the whole of the object as well. So we're gonna be doing some focus stacking as well. So I'm gonna come on, I'll come on to the subject in a moment, but this is the uh, setup that I went with. I'm using, I'm in my office, I'm using an old picnic table, because um, it's the highest table I've got. I've got a footstool on the table, to make it higher so that I don't have to bend because let's face it, I'm not getting any younger. I have the Canon 1DX set up on my tripod and I'm using the 24 to 70 Mark I lens. So it's an old lens. And I hear you, what's that? I hear you cry, the 24 to 70 isn't a macro lens. You're right, it is not a macro lens, but it's the only lens I've got. So I am using what are known as close-up filters or um, close-up lenses that screw on to the end of the lens to give you, to enable you to get, take the normal lens with a focal distance of say 30 centimeters. I don't know what it is for this, um, but it enables you to get closer to your subject um, so you can see more detail in true macro style. Now for this one, I have got on a 10 times filter and a two times filter. So that gives a times 12, I guess, I don't know, but <laughs> that was what logic would tell me. Um, so they're both screwed into each other because the lenses that I've got, um, here's another two that you may have just seen, but you can screw them together. So this is a, a four and a one, which you probably may or may not be able to see. Um, on the camera, I have a 10 and a two which are the other two in the set. So it's a set of four, one, two, four, and a 10. Now, if you haven't seen it already, I'm now gonna introduce you to my subject. It is a strawberry. I'm not sure why I chose a strawberry. Um, I had to find something that was around the house. It had good texture on it. It has good details. When you zoom in, you can see the little seeds and the little hairs on the strawberry. Um, and it's something where that, that texture goes around the strawberry. So it seemed quite a good idea to be able to, to use it for a focus stack as well. So. There's no other reason why I decided to have a strawberry and I can eat it at the end, um, which is a bonus. You can't really do that if you do an insect. Well, you could. Okay, so the first impressions, oh, what am I doing? First impressions for, um, for this. I find you have to be really precise with the lens. You have to get it really close, or you have to be in, there's, there's such a small area to work with. If you go an inch too far, you can't focus on the subject. If you go an inch too close, it won't focus. There's, there's a real, real small sweet spot that you have to get that lens in for it to be able to focus. And now obviously that will be different with each of the focus, which each of the close-up lenses you screw onto it. Um, but bear that in mind if you're thinking of doing this. It's it does take a little bit of moving in and out and and setting up to make sure you you've got that sweet spot done. Um, and you've got the lens in the right place. That I think was probably the most frustrating thing I found. Um, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't lock onto the focus. Um, so I have even more admiration now for those people that can set up a shot and get a real close up photo of a, a dragonfly licking its eyeballs. Do dragonflies do that? Wiping its, doing all the, I don't know. But if they're using, they, maybe if they're that into it, they've got a proper lens or maybe with a proper lens you don't have as much of an issue, but I've never used a macro lens. I'm using these close-up filters. So just bear that in mind. You do, I do find you have to have that little sweet spot either side of that and you're not gonna focus. So that's one thing to bear in mind. 
So we've got the camera, we've got the close-up lenses on, we've got the subject, we've got the lights on. We are now gonna see if we can get a nice close-up picture. So this is just a one picture, nice and close-up of the, I'll probably take a few, but I'm looking for one that is a nice full frame, close up to the strawberry and you can see all the bits and all the seeds and all the colors and the textures of this strawberry. So we're gonna do that now with the camera. Let's have a look. So like I said, I wanna fill the frame with this shot. So we're gonna just do one or two focus points and take a couple of shots to see which one of those is gonna be the best when we get it in the computer and we'll pick one of those as a single shot macro uh, picture. And then we're gonna go and do the, the, the one where you wanna focus stack through the image and get a picture of the entire strawberry in focus, top of the strawberry, bottom of the strawberry, or the whole strawberry in focus, which will mean taking several shots through the, through the focal points. So I'm gonna get a range of shots now through the subject, making sure that it's sharp from front to back and you can see all that juicy berryness. Now it turns out that this particular lens suffers, I learnt, here's a learning part of the shoot learn share, I learnt that it suffers from focus breathing, which means that as you adjust the focal point, the zoom adjusts slightly as well. So the final image is only gonna be as big as the smallest image, if that makes sense. So if, if you take lots of images and in one image the strawberry is this big, and in the, the other end of the scale the strawberry is this big, then it will blend everything to the smallest strawberry, obviously, to the smallest picture. Uh, but that is called focus breathing. I think it's quite common, and this lens has it, and, and hopefully you'll be able to see that on, I'm showing an example of that in this video. Okay, so we've got the pictures. We've got a nice flat photo. We've got a, um, or a nice single photo to see the textures. We've zoomed out. When I did zoom out, by the way, I did take off um, you may not have seen this on camera, but I took off one of the filters so it went down from a 10 plus 2 to just a 10 because I needed to be further away from the subject to make sure I got the whole of the subject in and with the 10 and the 2 on, it wouldn't lock onto the subject so I had to take the 2 off, zoom out, get it into the range for that 10 filter and then take the photos with just the one filter on. Um, so again, it's a lot of filling around, which I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have to do if you had a native proper macro lens, um, but 500 pound, 30 pound, if you're just doing it to start out, if you just want to practice, if you've never done it before, these close-up filters are a pretty good way to, to start your photography journey into, into macro. So unless you're loaded and it doesn't matter, in which case, fill your boots. Um, but I've only got the filters for this one. Okay, so done. Like I say, we've got the one shot with a 10 filter on, 10 times filter on. We've got the, um, sorry, we've got the one photo with the 10 and the two filter on. We've taken the two filter off and we've got several photos to stack. We are now gonna jump into the computer and we're gonna put those together and see what, um, see what it looks like and edit it and see what the final product is. Uh, let's, let's go and have a look at that now. Let's do it. So welcome to the computer. Uh, okay, so we've taken several images and um, I have two, I've gone for two from the close up because it just wasn't quite sharp enough for my liking on camera. Um, so I've taken two into the computer to look for, and I may have to merge the two to get a nice close up one of the strawberry. The one that's a bit further away where we're getting the whole strawberry in, I've got nine. We're gonna do, I've, I've already done a couple of edits in um, in Lightroom on them, and then copied those edits across all the images. So I've edited the first one of the whole strawberry and copied it across all the other whole strawberries, and I've edited one of the close-ups, and I've copied that across the other strawberry as well. So the pictures are looking pretty consistent. We're now gonna take them into Photoshop, just merge them, and see what they look like. So let's jump into Lightroom now first and I'll show you quickly. I've done a video on this before um, of how to do focus stacking and I'll link that here. Um, but this is gonna so this is gonna be a lot quicker just to, to, to see the process and to see how the macro 
has come out for these photos. So let's have a look. Okay, so here we are in uh, Lightroom um, and you can see that I've got one to eight are the images, two or six, yes, yeah, so it's actually eight images I took. So one to eight are the images of the whole strawberry and nine and 10 are the ones that are a little bit closer up that I'm hoping that it's gonna show some more detail when we've cropped it. So I've done some quick editing on these just to get them all looking the same. So we are now gonna take these into Photoshop to merge them and stack them and do some cropping and anything else we need to do. So all you need to do is right mouse, like I said, this is gonna be really quick because there's another video um, on this. So right mouse click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop, and that should automatically open those two images in the same file as separate layers. And you can see that's what it's doing now. It takes a couple of seconds. Okay, so we now have both the photos, two layers, each photo with slightly, slightly different focusing. Not much, but a little bit. I wanted to put two together just to give that more even focusing over the, over the surface of the strawberry. So once you've got them in Photoshop, you can just highlight both layers and you go to edit, auto blend layers. Oh, no, I've done that wrong. <laughs> I did that last time. Oops, edit auto align layers. And what that does, that makes sure that, that just makes sure, makes sure that the strawberries are lined up on each photo. So once that's done, you then go to edit auto blend layers. And that will now take the sharpest points of each photo and give you one image that's left. So it won't take long with two images. Um, there we go, it's done already. And this is the final image you can see here. The white is what it's kept. So one image it's kept, the center and the outline and the other it's kept around the periphery of the strawberry. Um, so that's fine because we don't want the whole strawberry anyway. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we are on the top layer and we are going to go into the crop. We're gonna keep the same ratio for the point of this and we're gonna just do a quick zoom something like that and tick it and we're going to have a final image of a real close up of a strawberry now i'm the looking at this i'm the first one to admit that isn't brilliant i told you at the start it wouldn't be it's probably not going to be very good um there are some soft areas on the top here um and but, but this wasn't the photo that's supposed to be f um, in focus all the way through, don't forget. This was just a photo to try and highlight these little seeds in here and um, you know the detail on the, le on, the, on the leaves of the berry and, and these little, I don't want to call them hairs, but maybe they are, I don't know. Um, I don't want to eat it if it's a hair. Um, so this is the one that's real close up. So we are you can see down here we've now got three three separate layers the two individual ones and the one that's merged so we are now going to go back to lightroom and we are going to do exactly the same with these eight now this might take a bit longer and sometimes it doesn't work first time but we're going to give it a go anyway edit in open as layers in photoshop Okay, so here we are, we have the eight or nine, I think it's eight images in Photoshop, 008 down to 0015. So again, we are going to, just very quickly, you can see here that it's really soft um, around the, the top here, and, and this stem is, is really in focus. Um, and then if we were to pick, let's put that back on the screen. Let's just quickly undo that. And if we were to pick this one, you can see here, the stem is now out of focus and the top is in focus. So again, we're gonna blend. Let's put all these back on again. I'm doing this really quickly, by the way, in case you didn't know, which you probably did. Um, click on the bottom one and drag, and that kind of makes them all the layers visible again. So they're all highlighted, edit, 
auto align to make sure all the images are lined up because don't forget there could have been a bit of focus breathing as we moved around the image. So it's now going to make sure all those images, all those strawberries line up and they're, they're layered perfectly. It is eight images so it will take a tiny bit longer than normal or than the last one anyway. Okay and you can see there is a little bit of a checkerboard around the outside so it has had to do some aligning. Um, and we're now going to make sure that they are all still highlighted, all the layers are still highlighted down here and we are going to edit and auto blend them. And this is where we should get a real nice smooth um, or in focus strawberry, um, including this leaf and, and other bits. Um, although these leaves are sticking a bit further forward than I was expecting. Uh, didn't really pay that closer attention, but let's see. Let's see if we manage to pick that up. There we go. So, I mean, um, that's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good, look at that. So we've got the stem in focus, we've got these leaves in focus, we've got the top of the strawberry in focus, all the way down to here. Now I'm looking at it really closely around here and this will probably need some tidying up around the floor if this was gonna be used for anything other than my bit of fun and um, because you can see it's probably taken um, it's, this is quite soft and this is trying to be in focus so that might need addressing and the other thing I can see is this black line around the outside now I looked into that on another photo that I took and it turns out that it's it could be a result of over sharpening in the camera but I've turned the sharpening right down on my camera um, there could be some aberration around the edge here from the lens, which I probably should have corrected in Lightroom. Um, let's see if we can find one that's got the focus around the outside and... Oh, so that was the one I think. So you can see some yellow lines around the outside here and we probably, yeah, you see, I should have done, maybe I can do that afterwards. I could do it in Photoshop, but you can see that yellow line is gone. So that's one box I didn't tick before I took it into, um, into Photoshop, but it's easily fixed. I could just load the layers again and redo it, um, but I won't bore you with that. Let's flick back to Photoshop. Let's fit this on screen. Now I think that's pretty good. Um, uh, let's not forget I'm not using a macro lens. I'm using these close up filters. I'd never have got an image that clear without them. And if I take a little bit more time editing it and not two minutes for to show you guys, you can see that you can get some quite good results. So um, there we go. Let's have a quick look back at the other one. Yeah, you know what, I, I actually think that this one might even crop better. If my computer wasn't so slow. Oh. Oh. Okay, let's go back to original ratio. So this is the whole strawberry cropped. Take a long time. See that, that that looks that's pretty good. You know, considering what we're using, I'm quite happy with that. So that's um it's actually probably clearer than that one. There you go, maybe I was too close. There's a lesson learned. We're learning things here, people. We're learning things. Okay, done. I'm not going to bore you anymore. I think I've rattled on long enough. So um, thank you for sticking with me if you've made it this far. If anyone can tell me in the comments how to get rid of that black line around the outside, is it just the lighting? Is it something in camera? Is it something in... Um, so they're raw files, so it's nothing to do with the JPEG compression in the camera. Um, 
yeah leave me a comment down below and tell me if there's a way of getting rid of those black lines so that i can learn something else so thank you very much for watching thank you for making it this far i appreciate your time um hit that like button if you found this useful if you didn't find it useful hit the like button anyway um and leave a comment if you can help me out with anything else or if i can help you out with anything else and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so um thank you very much i love you all and i will see you in the next video see you later bye bye i nearly forgot strawberry much nicer than an insect mm. see you next time